Inside New Orleans Sports with Eric Asher is underwritten by... At Villeray's Florist, we deliver the magic of flowers seven days a week to the North Shore and South Shore in the New Orleans area. Whether it's for birthday parties, baby celebrations, Villeray's provides colorful floral displays for all. With a store full of fresh cut flowers, exotic tropical flowers, orchids, roses, and even fruit baskets, our goal is to make your vision a reality. Villeray's Florist, proudly serving Louisiana since 1969. Dave Me at Insurance Agency, 504-556-0809 or Dave Me at insagency.com. For over 48 years, Southern Tires and Auto Repair has provided services across the New Orleans metro area. Southern Tires offers a range of tires for all vehicles and ATVs. We also have a full suite of auto repair options, including brake repair, rim repair, custom exhaust, steering and suspension, tire siping, and so much more. Southern Tires and Auto Repair, 2550 Hickory Avenue in Metairie. CNC Drugs is a family-owned pharmacy that's been serving Southeast Louisiana for over 50 years. Whether you need help taking care of an elderly family member, a growing child, or even a pet, CNC provides patient-centered care for your entire family. CNC Drugs large enough to serve you, small enough to know you. Locations in Mandeville and Araby. Good afternoon and welcome to another edition of Inside New Orleans Sports. I'm your host, Eric Asher, live from our Pontchartrain Production Studios on another beautiful day here in Old New Orleans. Uh, better than we've seen in uh, you know, the recent past with the rain, but hopefully we get another cool breeze coming. That'll be nice here in October. Uh, today we'll cover all the home teams for you. Saints, LSU, Tulane, Pelicans. We'll talk about the Ed Ogeron situation. Uh, if we get a chance, even uh, we'll even uh, talk to our guest about uh, high school football, which his station does very, very well. And joining us on the program is Doug Bouton, he's the sports director at WWL TV. Doug, welcome back to the show. Yeah, thanks for having me, Eric. Doug, uh, before we get started, tell the folks a little bit about what's going on over at uh, Channel 4 Sports. <laughs> uh, it's jam packed this time of year. Oh, well, look, the three months of football, the three real months, September, October, and November, right. when high school prep and college, uh, high school pro and college are all going on at the same time, are crazy right. times. Um, we didn't. This is a it's sort of a down week in the mm -hmm. SEC. So mm -hmm. CBS picked up the LSU Ole Miss game, which has a, a ton of of interest, especially yes. now with Lane Kiffin as mm -hmm. one of the names for uh, possibly uh, for LSU's coaching job. So we actually have an LSU post game special. Mm -hmm. The games on CBS, right. the games on Channel Four Saturday. So that changes stuff. We still do our our uh, prep show every within the ten o'clock news every Friday. Mm -hmm. um, we still do fourth that on four every Sunday. Mm -hmm. So right now, and then the Pelicans, of course, right. first game last night. So yeah, it's the it's without question the most fun month right. for sports is right now because that Major League Baseball playoffs, which we don't really cover because right. it's not local, right. is is happening too. So yeah, super fun time. Everything going right. on. Everybody's got great sort of angles and interest mm -hmm. right now. Yeah, just a yeah. fun time. And, and your uh, special will be what time? And, and oh, well, we go after the game. And Mike Dettelier and I have done that yep. for a decade yes. now. Where when, when, when LSU has that 2.30 slot on CBS. And mm -hmm. look, that 2.30 slot, CBS sort of invented that mm -hmm. slot like 20 years ago right. with the SEC. Now it's the appointment television across the country. So what happens when LSU is in that 2.30 slot, and it usually goes a little after 6, mm -hmm. we fill till 7. Yes. So so sometimes we start at 6. We've done shows that, Mike Mike and I joke, we've done shows that are 9 minutes long mm -hmm. that start at 6.51 yep. and go to 7. So whenever CBS hands it to us, we go to, go seven. to 7. Uh We'll have a crew in Oxford. Right. So full post-game reaction, everything. Uh, and those Saturdays are fun. I mean, yeah. just... 
doing it with Mike Dettelier because he'll sit in the sports mm-hmm. office and just watch the game. Yeah. Just watching a game with Mike right. is stupid yeah. fun. Right. It, just no, is. it is. Yeah. He's wealth, wealth of knowledge. Yeah, wealth. Uh-huh. Just ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, comedic. Right. You know, just fun to watch a no, game. No doubt. Well, let's start with the Saints. Again, 3-2 and two as they go, in, go uh, come out of the bye week. Uh, Doug, just overall, your thoughts on where this team is after five games. Well, look, I was the guy, uh, Jeff Duncan, who was at the Athletic mm-hmm. at the time, did a survey of, I want it was like 30 people mm-hmm. who cover the Saints all the time, asking them for the records. Right. I am the one guy who put 12 and 5. Okay. I'm the one guy who believed in this mm-hmm. team. And look, I've been accused of being overly optimistic <laughs> yeah. in the past, but in the last four right. years, I've been Come right. Um, I, I put 12 wins. Now, 12 may even be slightly optimistic, but I have thought from the beginning this team right. was going to be better than anybody thought, right. and I still think that. There are so many signs of a team. Mm-hmm. Look, 3-2 and two is pretty good right, right now. And for the guys they're missing, and I hate blaming injury. I hate blaming injuries right. and officials sure. for anything, but the fact is the Saints are missing crazy numbers of elite pieces mm-hmm. right now, and they're 3-2. and two. They're showing signs of being terrific on defense. Mm-hmm. They're showing signs of figuring out this offense and being good at times. They have yet to have their kicker, and that has made a difference. Yes. Um, the punter has been a – so special teams should be terrific. Mm-hmm. Um, the defense has a chance to be terrific, and I think the offense is a chance to be good. I I don't think at this point they're a Super Bowl team. Mm-hmm. I don't know, but I absolutely definitely right. think right. they're a playoff team right. with a ch- with a better chance to be better than people think mm-hmm. than a chance to be worse than right. people think. I don't know if that makes sense. No, it does. But I always play numbers. Mm-hmm. And I always play odds in my head, right. and I and I think they have a better chance mm-hmm. to be really good mm-hmm. than not. Right. And look. We know the playoffs are about matchups, right? Absolutely. I mean, again, yeah. you get the right matchup, right. and again, right. next thing you know, you know, you're in a, you're in a championship game, and then who knows what happens after that? Right. And, kind of, and of course, you got to get the right officiating crew. You, you got to get everything. <laughs> look, look, and look. It's the one thing we right. learned with the Saints, and I do believe that is true. I think the Saints have had three Super Bowl teams. Me too. 09, 11, and 18. Mm-hmm. In in 18, you, you had the no call and the and just right. horrible. In 11, you just had bad luck. Mm-hmm. In nine. The, and in fact, I talked mm-hmm. when we did our Drew Brees special for his retirement. Right. I talked to Pierre Thomas and Marcus Colston and Jerry Evans. And the one thing that I, I talked to them about, and especially Colston, mm-hmm. is and 11, he believes 11 was team was better right. than nine. Right. And so do team, I. Right. And it, it takes so much luck mm-hmm. of the star, even when you're great, yes. of the stars just lining up and the matchup being good and not getting the mm-hmm. no call. And just everything has to go right. Yes. It's so, it's, you, you don't just have to be great. You have to be lucky mm-hmm. to win a championship. But sure. I think I think we see that now. Mm-hmm. And you appreciate nine more after seeing yes. the 11 and 18 teams, which were Super Bowl teams that didn't win it right. for various reasons, and nine did, mm-hmm. and it's it's lightning in a bottle. You see, you have to get the right matchups, yep. the right officiating. You need everything to be right. No Not problem. one dropped pass that right. tips into a pick six. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? You need everything well, you look at nine. to be right. Look how things went in nine. Things went in nine. It, it was mm-hmm. magical. Right. And we didn't realize that, because we had never seen mm-hmm. it. Yeah, right. We didn't realize how, if we had had 11 right. first, mm-hmm. then nine maybe would have felt right. even different. But yeah, nine was magical magical yes. in a way that we all yeah. I mean all of us who live through it yeah. see it Come now no. and and yeah it, you need everything to be plus right. I think people realize how hard it is now to get there yeah it's so because, because I think a lot of people felt like again myself yeah. included, after nine oh this team this set up easy. the next five years we're gonna be there this over is gonna be over. a dynasty now you, we all realize that right. just being great right. is not enough no, you have not. to be great and lucky yep that's for sure all right let's talk a little bit about again first of all the offense Jameis yeah. Winston your thoughts on where he is now and where you again um, expect him to be as we get into the second and third quarter of the season. Yeah, and so look, Sean Payton actually said it, which I thought was interesting. Right. Jameis Winston said it before the Washington game about finding the offensive mm-hmm. identity. Look, the fact is in 20, and we're seeing a lot of the positives Drew Brees did, mm-hmm. like being able to call protections and yes. being able to, to to just manage. But the one thing he couldn't do was get the ball upfield, mm-hmm. right? So Sean Payton managed around that. Still won 12 games right. with a team that couldn't throw right. a forward pass. True. Won 12 games. They are refinding out who this team is. And we've seen Jameis now, and you saw it in Washington, Deontay mm-hmm. Harris, that, that bomb. You saw it. 
against the Giants, yeah. the one to Kenny Stills that got called mm -hmm. back, and the one mm -hmm. to Callaway. Um, Jameis, and you saw it in the preseason, Jameis Winston throws a spectacular deep pass. Like, few quarterbacks in right. the NFL, maybe like none other, right. because he, he puts a ton of air under it. It's soft. It looks easy to mm -hmm. catch. And he hits got he hit Callaway, right. who is one speed. Right. Kenny Stills, who is a ramp up. Mm -hmm. And Deontay Harris, who's two ramp ups right. from that, hit all three of them in perfect stride. Right. Exactly. All three of them. Mm -hmm. it, it's the one thing, if and Sean Payton, the one like elite play caller mm -hmm. and designer has always been able to maximize his mm -hmm. talent in this bye week as he looks as he does a self-evaluation yes. he looks at those True. bombs from Jameis Winston mm -hmm. I guarantee you're going to see more balls yeah. going downfield or at least more things running deep mm -hmm. I think the offense needs Mike Thomas if, if, the 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 pie chart on Jameis's throws mm -hmm. is missing all the easy ones yep. and Mike Thomas is the guy from the body from the physicality the the quick slants I mean right. it, Thomas almost gets criticized for it, which is crazy. Right. Because nobody in the NFL runs it like But nobody him. can stop him. And nobody can stop him. You have to overplay him, which right. is going to open it up from Kamara. Right. And Jameis Winston has the deep yes. ball ability. His quarterback rating is top five in the NFL mm -hmm. right now. His Everybody brings up the year in 19 when he had 30 interceptions yeah. and more than two turnovers right. a game. Right now, he's got four turnovers right. in five games. Right. He's averaging less than one mm -hmm. turnover a game. If he does that all year, oh. they might win 12 mm -hmm. games. They're going to win 10 or 11 for sure. They're a playoff team for sure if Jameis isn't mm -hmm. turning the ball over. I think Mike Thomas changes things. Yeah. But you're also going to get Armstead back. You're going to get McCoy right. back. Traquan Smith is going to help Callaway yes. be better. Um, this offense hasn't even begun right. to scratch its surface. I agree and, with you. Like the numbers are weird on it right mm -hmm. now. Second to last in yards, mm -hmm. but top ten in points scored. Mm -hmm. Like they've still been able to, and that's without their kicker. Right. So there are so many things about this offensive team that we don't know yet right. that I think this week mm -hmm. has, like I, I love the fact that Sean Payton has had a whole week to look at this mm -hmm. and figure it out. Right. Because I think we're going to see a slightly different offense. And then when Mike Thomas mm -hmm. is back and it looks like he's going to miss a couple more yes. weeks. When Mike Thomas is back by the halfway point, I think you're going to see a wholly different offense that has a chance to be really good. Right. And, of course, uh, you know, as we're doing this live this afternoon uh, here on, on WLAE TV, uh, Peyton said this morning there will be more players that are, that are going to be available. Yeah. Those that, again, we know that Armstead McCoy did not go on IR. Big, right. We had, we had players that are coming off IR. That Four again, of them. Right. Four and, big and, ones. Right. And there'll be probably more. Of course, Mike Thomas is on the pup list. Right. Well, again, that might be another couple of weeks. But to your point, I agree with about Michael Thomas. You think you got, you've got the deep throw, mm -hmm. uh, the deep throws that, that are going to be open yeah. now? Right. What happens when he comes? Mm -hmm. when, when, again, when teams have to worry about him and Kamara in the short passing game, and then you're opening that up. I think the sky's the limit for this offense. Well, that was the recipe forward. in 18. Right. That's why the offense was That's still right. good in 18. Because right. you had the one-two punch of those two guys. You, right now, Kamara's getting so overplayed. Mm -hmm. And you saw the Saints start to figure it out with yes. Washington True. to get Kamara loose a little bit. Mm -hmm. He got loose more in Washington than in any other game. Um, you want to, you want to manage his touches right. a little. You don't bit? want him being that physical inside running back. You don't. Back. You don't. When they lost Tony Jones, that right. kind of hurt. Well, they bring Lamar Miller in now. We'll see if he's got anything left in the tank. But they need that physical. They need back. somebody just to take the hit. That's it. Yeah. I mean, look, he doesn't even have to be great. He just right. has to not fumble and get the yards that are there. Right. 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 I mean, just do. I mean, again, what other backs have done opposite him Correct. Uh, during his tenure here. Offensive line again played played very well. Right. With with the, with the reserves that that looks good going into the stretch here. But again. They're getting two of their best back. Yeah, no question. And Ram, it, Ryan Ramchek is having mm -hmm. a, an all pro season through five right. games. He's been terrific. Rock Martin and and ha has done a terrific really job has. filling in. No. Like they, they've gotten they've gotten good enough play. Until, look, McCoy is the one guy we did something on fourth down on mm -hmm. four. Who's your breakout player of the year? To me, for me, it was Eric McCoy, mm -hmm. who's considered maybe top ten centers in the NFL. But on the back half of that, I think he has a chance to be an elite NFL center. You lose him yeah. right off the bat. You lose he and Marcus Davenport, who I thought mm -hmm. both had a right. chance to be huge breakout guys in the first half against right. Green Bay um, and I can't wait to get those two guys back because right. again these are elite pieces mm -hmm. David Onyemata is an elite piece Mike Thomas these aren't just players no. these are elite 
players. Right. I mean, not elite on the team, elite in the NFL. And if there is a silver lining to this, a lot of the young players who, again, had to step up because you lost so many quality veteran backups, they've had a chance to be on the field now. Yeah, no and, question. And you're not going to ask as much of them down the stretch, hopefully, if you can stay healthy. On the defensive end, first, second, third levels, again, the pass rush has been a little bit suspect, especially yeah. without Davenport and Anyamata, yeah. but you got to like what you're saying just based on what, what they have now. Now here come the reinforcements. Yeah, no question. Look, one of, one of the pleasant surprises has been Pete Werner. No doubt. He's been a tackling machine. He really has. He's been excellent. Look, it, when the Saints signed Quan Alexander, mm -hmm. honestly, it was a little bit of a really because they they had spent draft mm -hmm. picks on on Zach Bond and Pete Werner. Right. Werner looks like the guy. Yes. And but it certainly doesn't hurt them. Quan Alexander no, have options too because not everybody's going to stay healthy. So you're certainly deep at mm -hmm. linebacker. De Demario Davis is having a Pro Bowl, maybe an All Pro season yes. again. Marcus Williams has taken a step yes, forward. Yes, I think he's having at least a Pro Bowl mm -hmm. year. Uh, Marshawn Lattimore has All been Pro unbelievably yeah. good. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So you're showing signs. The one thing that's been missing, you right. said it has been the pass rush, but I think potentially your best, two of your best three yes. pass rushers have been mm -hmm. out. Right. And Davenport, I, I watched it again last night because when Davenport, mm -hmm. and he's one of the guys that is now uh, activated so he right. can practice. Yes. 21 days to put him on the roster. So Davenport will be back on the team at some point in the mm -hmm. next three weeks. I watched the first <clears> half of the Green Bay game again because I was looking for some Davenport plays yes. to cut a little bit of video. I did that during halftime of the Pelicans game. Stunning how dominant mm -hmm. he was against Green Bay. Right. Like He was a guy. And I, look, I know counting on Davenport is right. dangerous because he's shown flashes yeah. before. But man, he was so good. He had a spectacular training mm -hmm. camp. Can't wait to see him yes. back fully healthy. And you get on Yamada, you miss him one more week, mm -hmm. you get him back. He's an elite defensive right. tackle. He took a major step forward last year, not recognized nationally. Mm -hmm. Defensive tackle is one of those positions, yes. like offensive tackle, right. where you get recognized two or three years after you've been great. Absolutely. And, and I think that's on Yamada. Adebo comes in. He's holding down that spot, even bringing in Bradley Roby. Uh, again, they even made some moves to cut some veteran um, uh, veteran uh, corners last week. Uh, um, so, again, you're looking at a situation. All of a sudden, you got to feel pretty good. Guys coming back about the first, second, and third levels of this defense, yeah. especially, again, with the star power you're getting back. And I think, look, Adebo's been, Adebo's been good. I wouldn't say great, but he's no. been good. But I will say, once you get a little bit of <laughs> – covered people is so much easier yes. with a quarterback has less time right. and is – and is hassled, and when Anyamata gets a push in the mm -hmm. middle, um, I think all of that's going to look better when he comes back again. I, like I see so many levels mm -hmm. for optimism for this team looking forward um, that this team can be a really good team. Now again. Cam Jordan gets hurt and Marcus Williams gets hurt, right. and you have to readjust. And there's no guarantee people stay healthy. Sure, um, but man. I see, I see more chances this team gets better than gets worse going well, forward. And from a coaching standpoint, you haven't had your full complement of players yet. Right. You hope to be getting those back within the next couple of weeks. Again, look, injuries happen all the time. It happens all the time, right. and I hate talking about right. them, except this level of injuries, right. not just the players, but the elite players, sure. I think changes it. You're going to have Dennis Allen now that's going to have an opportunity to be, again, more, more aggressive. Yeah. Uh, you know, um, 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 and also, you're giving Peyton an opportunity now, as you mentioned, the self-scout in the all. Yeah. And and now he's getting his weapons back. Yeah. So you got to feel good about both. And look, the special teams, with the, expect, with the exception of the place kicker, yeah. have been really good. They've been terrific. Really good. The place kicker's been abysmal. Oh. Yeah, horrible. But you've got Will Lutz, who's top five in the history of the NFL, yes. and, and has been clutch so often for the Saints. You, and you're going to get him back. He's also one of the guys, again, 21 days. We don't know when he's activated. Could be this week. Could be right. another week. But but it's coming. Right. The second half of the season has a chance to be really fun. Yeah, I agree. Now, again, they got Brian Johnson, they pulled out the Chicago practice squad. He's got to be on the roster for the next three weeks. So, again, if he's making field goals, there's no reason to rush him back. But, again, obviously you want Lutz back as quickly as you can. Now, I'm optimistic. I, look, I've said it. i said it as we got to the break here. This is a playoff team. Yeah. And, and, again, you cannot look at this team based on what they have right now with the guys that are out and with the anticipation of those guys coming back and not say that, again, this is going to be a team that's going to be able to ramp it up in the second, third quarters of the, the season. Yeah, and what you said about having two kickers, that's really not a problem. You got a 53 man roster. Yes. You only activate 47. Right. And one the of those guys. Squad expansion helps it, that. Right, man. right, right. Yeah, there's, there's, that doesn't mean Will Lutz is out three no. more weeks no. because the day Will Lutz is ready to kick, he's, 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 he's kicking, he's kicking again. Right. Yeah, there's, there, you're not going to wait on him. Right, right. You'll hold off on Johnson for a couple weeks, and then again at that yeah, point, sure, you can always stash him right. on inactive. Right, like they did with Gilligan. Sure. Right. Yeah. Right. 
No doubt. Uh, we'll take a break. We come back. Want to shift the ears to LSU. We'll talk about the team. First of all, great um, performance by the team last week against Florida. And then, of course, we'll talk about Ed O's run in that situation. We'll also get into some Pelicans. We'll talk about uh, conference realignment and possible regionalization for, uh, for the American Athletic Conference, how that affects Tulane. Uh, and, of course, so much more right here on Inside New Orleans Sports. Doug Mouton, Sports Director of WWL-TV, is our guest. I'm your host, Eric Asher. Stick around. Burkhart's Air Conditioning, Heating, and Refrigeration has been family-owned and operated since 1989. Burkhart has energy-efficient solutions and offers brands such as Mitsubishi ductless AC units and Amena, the only manufacturer with a lifetime unit replacement warranty. Burkhart's offers maintenance bundle packages that include servicing your AC, generator, and tankless water heater. For more information on the services Burkhart's provides, visit acpromise.com. Burkhart's Air Conditioning, Heating, and Refrigeration, providing comfort for life. Experiencing rough weather with a bad roof can be a nightmare. It doesn't have to be. Suburban roofing, because when it comes to roofing, there is a difference. Located at 3701 Iberville Street in Mid-City is Katie's Restaurant and Bar. Open seven days a week, Katie's offers daily specials for lunch, dinner, and Sunday brunch. Serving New Orleans cuisine such as fried shrimp platters, grilled redfish, and a fully stocked bar. And don't forget about our expanded event seating and local entertainment. Featured on the best of food networks, diners, drive-ins, and dives, Katie's Restaurant and Bar. Welcome back to Inside New Orleans Sports. Uh, our guest today is Doug Bouton of uh, Channel 4 Sports. All right, let's jump into some LSU. 4-3, uh, 49-42 three, winners over Florida. They were left for dead. Uh, second half of the Kentucky game, a lot of people believe, myself included, that you know the running game was just, again, Kentucky saying, all right, we're not going to call the dogs off, but we got you physically beat. Who cares? Uh, they came out with purpose. It looked like an LSU football team yeah. on Saturday. Uh, just your thoughts on, again, uh, the guys really picking themselves off the mat and playing really well against the 20th ranked team in the nation. Yeah, look, I hate to say it, I love LSU beating Florida. Right. <laughs> I lived in Florida for four years. Okay. Beating Florida. If you're going to pick one game on the right. schedule that you're going to beat a team right. and hurt them is Florida, for right. me, right. personally. Well, a lot of people now, a lot of people believe that's become a rivalry. It, it has. It really has. And Florida is just easy to not right. like, I find. Mm -hmm. So I love I love that win. Yeah. <clears throat> look, Ed Ogeron knew he was out yes. before the game. I wonder if that almost took some pressure off, relaxed things. Yes. Um, they called a great game. They really did. It, it, it was by far, it, it was just their, obviously their best overall effort, mm. but it was, it was their smartest game. Mm. They they played like an LSU team. I think they you did. said it best. The way they ran the ball was so that unbelievable. They couldn't stop the counter. They ran that play almost over every, and over. And they couldn't stop it. Couldn't over figure and it over. Out. And Mashburn playing tight end. Oh, yeah. A kid from St. Paul's he, who we've he, watched for years. He plays great. so well. Oh, yeah, with the neck roll right. hitting people. You know, the the... the the counter was worked unbelievably right. well, and I I love the old school football right. that you're not going to stop it. We're going to run this every play. Every play. We're going to keep running. That's right, and they're they did. Run it Forty times, right. and they did, right. and it worked every. Well, time. it happened to them last week, the week before against Absolutely, Kentucky. Absolutely, yeah. If you can't stop <laughs> right. someone physically, right? I mean, that's football. They got to keep running the play. Gonna, yeah, right. keep keep running it over and over. LSU was smart enough to keep doing this. Clearly, the best game from a play calling mm -hmm. standpoint and from an execution. And that's standpoint. with again losing so many elite players that week, which you. Think Think again could have really hurt the psyche of the team yeah. even more. A lot of young players played last week and played very, very yeah, well. Yeah, and look, and, and if you when you write the the what happened to Ed Ogeron, a lot of it is the he got elite players mm -hmm. and didn't get anything. Avery Gilbert last right, year, right. he got a couple of games, and then he goes, right. look, Derek Stingley, mm -hmm. who might have been the the. I, probably top five pick in the NFL draft. Right. You got one year out of him. Mm -hmm. You got one year, one year out of him. Right. Jamar Chase, right. you know, who is a, a five-star guy. Mm -hmm. Obviously, look look how good he is. You got two years out of him, mm -hmm. and really, he was only learning in year one. You got one good year out of him. Um, John Emery at Destrahan, right. five-star kid. Right. You're getting nothing, nothing out of him. So a lot of of 
when the Ed Ogeron story at LSU mm -hmm. is written on, on the way out, the yes. nine and eight since the national championship, a lot of that, it's certainly not in recruiting. It, and, and even not even so much in developing of talent. Yes. It's just these guys, you know, John Emery is great. Mm -hmm. And A. Reed Gilbert gets homesick after COVID. Mm -hmm. And Derek Stingley gets hurt. Like a lot of it is, is just a series of bad things mm -hmm. that happen. And obviously in the SEC, everybody's got three stars and four stars. Mm -hmm. It's the elite kids yeah. that throw you over the top. I mean, Joe Burrow obviously turned out to be an elite player. Mm -hmm. But that team had, you know, a dozen of elite players right. even in, since then what should have been five or six or seven elite players LSU's got nothing right. out. well again look Renee Nato had a great article in CrestedSports.com I know you read it a third of Ed yeah. Ogeron's uh, recruits again either didn't make the team right. had off the field issues whatever it was that's that's crushing crushing okay on top of that the revolving door of coordinators and, yeah. and assistant yeah. coaches hurt development yeah there's no other way around that so again when you look at those at those Two, just those two situations. That's very, very difficult. Yeah, to look, overcome. it was a, it was a perfect storm of what went wrong. One, right. you had you had such an amazing year in 2019 yes. that both your coordinators mm -hmm. get incredible jobs right. and leave you. And look, Dave Aranda was such a stabilizing mm -hmm. force. Oh, you see what he's doing at Baylor. Right. Dave Aranda is a great college mm -hmm. football. Player. You lose Brady, you lose Aranda. Mm -hmm. Steve Ensminger retires. Yes, like you you lose it all. And then all those players that just happen to have matured matured together, which right. is why you were so good. Yes. Now they're all gone. And even the few that were left, like Jamar Chase mm -hmm. and, and Carrie Vincent, right. you lose opt out, which is just got because of, and then COVID, COVID hits. Right. Yeah, it was it was a perfect storm of things. Although look, I will say this, nine and eight since then, mm -hmm. you cannot tell me, and I know Scott Woodward said it's one hundred percent football, right. the reason Ed Ogeron's out. I cannot believe that right. it is not 100 percent no. football it can't be mm -hmm. it's all the other stuff yes. it is the Darius guy mm -hmm. situation it is the social justice right. issues between Ed Ogeron mm -hmm. and his team last year right. um, it, it's all of it played a role nine and eight exacerbated it yes. made it possible I, I agree. but all the other things right. played a role because if you looked at it just from a football standpoint who is most capable of getting you to a national championship all these guys out here that haven't done it mm -hmm. and for the most part everyone you're looking at aside from maybe Jimbo Fisher right. they all haven't done it mm -hmm. um, or the guy who has already delivered mm -hmm. the greatest season in LSU football like right. who's more capable of getting you there again right. um, so it to me, it can't be just football, and it's not just football. Right. There might be some reason he has to say mm -hmm. it's just football, but I, I don't believe it's just the football. Although, yeah, just the football hasn't been great. But also between COVID and the opt-outs and the issues, mm -hmm. um, I, if it was me and you had no off-the-field problems, right. I would give Ed Ogeron a ch I, you know, would have a stern talking right. to. Look, you let it get away from you, at, but let's start ramping up now. Right. And I'd give him another shot to ramp up and do it again. Because that 19 championship team, this is one thing I do want to say. Les Miles' championship was a lot of Nick Saban's guys yes. that he took over at the right time. Mm -hmm. Ed Ogeron's championship was Ogeron's offense, Ogeron's defense. Um, it, it was Ogeron's guys right. and Ogeron's recruits. Mm -hmm. it, this was Ed Ogeron's team. Team. He put that together. Yes. The greatest team in the history of LSU is owned. That was owned by Ed Ogeron. Right. And he did that. Um, and I'd give him another shot, but I understand with the off the field issues yeah. why it well, had to happen. That, that's it. Okay. And, and again, uh, we talked about it before the show started. Could it be a situation as part of the buyout? Yeah. Again, it's all about football, right? Yeah. yeah. Again, you, you got Title IX situations. Right. Again, the investigation is still going on there. You know, the off the field situation with his personal life. Uh, you get into, again, the again we talked about the revolving door of coaches. Right. I mean, it, it all of that has to do, do, do with but. I think that most programs look the other way. Yeah. If they have a championship yeah. coach yeah. that dips a little bit, yeah. and they give them an opportunity to be able to, again, right the ship. Uh, with everything else that was going on off the field, yeah. at that point, it was time to be able to move on in, in the mind of Woodward, uh, members of the Board of Supervisors, I'm sure, and, of course, boosters who have been putting out money for, again, those coordinators who were who were cut loose. And, and it seemed, and I... And in a year fans. or two, I want to. I would love to have this conversation right. with Ed Ogeron. It seemed he almost accepted. It. He didn't look happy about no. it, obviously, but it seemed he almost accepted it right. um, as an eventuality. He said after the Kentucky game, mm -hmm. he knew it was coming, which 
I I think did, he lost focus. Hey, there's, there's no, no other question. way around. There's it. no question. I, I've said he's basked. He basked in the glow of the championship. There's no question. You got to double down when you win a championship. No, no, no. And I get that. And I get that. But again, it's a guy who. His whole life is building towards one thing. He gets that. Right, exactly. I, I get how you right. want to feel good about it for a little while. Right. I get that. If I'm ramping up for a next championship, mm -hmm. here's a guy that's already done it. Right. I mean, whenever people criticize Sean Payton, that's the first thing I say is, you're going to go out and try to find somebody find that you Sean. hope right. maybe can no. be the guy? No. Or do you have the guy who yes. has gotten you there? Best right. record in the NFL over the last four years. Plus, that's not Scott Woodward's guy. Right. If that's Woodward's guy. Maybe, again, he gets a little bit more rope. Maybe so. Maybe okay, so. that's not his guy. Maybe so. So, again, that, there's and, that part as well. And I get it, and it's unfortunate, and it's sad, and... Yeah, yeah, it, it absolutely makes me right. sad because mm -hmm. I like Ed Ogeron. Right. I like him as a coach. I think he's good for LSU. I understand things went off the rails the last right. two years. I would have loved to have seen him get a chance to right. to revamp and mm -hmm. start over and do it again. He's, he's not going to get He's getting $17 million. He Okay, so again, million. so I mean, again. Oh, no, no, don't he, feel sorry for him. He'll be fine. Right. He's, he's, he's going to be 61, yeah. right? Okay, he can choose to go back to coaching down the line yeah. or again, yeah. he, can, he can just take that money and enjoy his life. He cannot coach in the SEC for 18 months right. Right. As, part of the, as part of the buyout agreement. He's going to be part of LSU. Look, I said this on my radio show. In three to five years from now, he's going to walk into on Tiger Stadium's turf and people are going to applaud I him. Agree. They're, they're, I agree. They're, they're, he's going to be loved and beloved because, again, he's one of four yeah. that has won a national yeah. championship yeah. and he's homegrown. Right. A lot of people forget the off-the-field stuff. They're only going to remember 19. And they'll certainly forget it over time. And, absolutely. and, and that, look, that stuff has to play out. The Darius right. Guy situation, right. the, the potentially mm -hmm. unreported rape allegations, yes. like all that stuff has to play out. I agree. Let all that play out. Let's right. go, let's get, and we'll, obviously we'll be past that right. in five years. And, and look, I can tell you personally, I will never forget 19. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've done this 35 years mm -hmm. now, and that was one of the most magic. Yes. Look, Saints 09, right. LSU 19. 19 yeah. Magical. Absolutely. And, and <laughs> because we're the CBS station, we wound up, I think, have seven games yes, on the air. Right. So we're doing pregame shows and postgame mm -hmm. shows, and we're at LSU. Multi like, I felt like I got to drink all of it in. Right. You know, I got to go yes. to the Oklahoma game. Mm -hmm. uh, I got to go to the national championship game. We were at the SEC championship. Mm -hmm. Like, we were there every step of the way, right. and it was a blast. Right. Like, few things right. I have ever experienced. Well, I mean, look, it, it captured the, you know, the the imagination of America. Uh, yeah. I, mean, I mean, just, again, the, the, the story. Story of Ed Ogeron, yeah, everything. okay, everything that went down, Joe Burrow, and, and then you know, I mean, all the way to the White House, where again, even in the White House, where they went when they did the little dance. They and had everything. so many guys and, on that team, right. like Burrow, right. like Justin Jefferson, who's right. a three-star, two-star mm -hmm. guy that nobody right. wanted. Clive edwards alaire who right. they were constantly looking for somebody to replace yep. him. All these guys that were, you know, they also had the studs right. like Derek Stingley mm -hmm. and Jamar Chase, right. but but they they had guys who became studs that weren't supposed to be. That became great stories, mm -hmm. like. They were just that team, like I said, right. 09 Saints and that team. Right. And that team had so many local elements. You know, Grant Delpit, a New mm -hmm. Orleans right. kid who moves to Houston mm -hmm. after Katrina yeah. because his family's washed out. Turns out, like the nicest kid, the family's now mm -hmm. back in, right. in New Orleans. And, you know, they love New Orleans. And they play for a national championship here. It, just awesome. It, it was. But, again, when you look at this now going forward, him not being there with all the off-the-field stuff, that goes away. So, now. Who's the next coach? Yes, yeah. Because I, this is tough. It, it's tough. And look, there's basically two levels of right. guys you're looking at. Right. It's it's the guys who are there now. Mm -hmm. um, I think Jimbo Fisher is not coming to LSU. I, think, so. I think that's a lateral move right. because because of the money and the the Texas a and is a great place right. with a great potential. Like you can win a national championship there. Right. I, I mean, I'm here. Plus, he's, Ryan, built, he's built a foundation now. And he's built a foundation, but it's also a financial foundation, right. Right. a student body foundation, oh, yeah. a, an administrative right. foundation, incredible endowment, um, everything. And yeah, everything. Like you, right. you, you have a recruiting base. Right. Talk about it. look. And we were talking before. LSU has the recruiting base. Louisiana right. is one of the yes. great recruiting bases that maybe Lincoln Riley doesn't have at Oklahoma, mm -hmm. although he can recruit nationally. Yes. But Jimbo Fisher has that yes. with the Houston area mm -hmm. and the way he can own Texas, especially as bad as Texas right. has been. Plus, he can dip in Louisiana. Correct. Jimbo Fisher has that. I think he's out, and I'm not sure he'd be my first choice anyway. Lincoln Riley of the – I think Ryan Day has that mm -hmm. at Ohio State. I agree. Because you got the whole Midwest you can mm -hmm. own. There's a lot of good football players in the state of sure. Ohio. I mean, look at the Saints roster mm -hmm. if you right. if you want to see it. I think I don't think Ryan Day is legit because and, – and I'm not sure he should be. He hasn't done it yet either. Right. Um, Lincoln Riley 
Riley, of all the national guys that are there, is an intriguing. Yeah. Obviously, James Franklin at Penn yeah, State. I agree with that. Those might be the two guys in position mm -hmm. now mm -hmm. that you might have a shot at. I don't know you have a shot at, but you might have a shot at. I think both those guys. Mm -hmm. I, I think both those guys could be national championship coaches. Right. Um, because of what they've done. Right. Lincoln Riley offensively, mm -hmm. maybe James Franklin more mm -hmm. defensively, depending on how you want to go. But the two of them, I think, are legit. And then there's all the guys right. you had mentioned from trying to find the next Nick Saban. Right. When else you hired Nick Saban, Nick Saban wasn't Nick Saban. No, he wasn't. Nick Saban was a pretty good coach yeah. at Michigan State who right. had done some – Michigan State – Look, I, I don't mean to – I have friends of mine who went to Michigan State. Mm -hmm. I don't mean this the way it's going to sound. You can't win a national championship no, at Michigan no, no. State. You're never going to have a recruiting right. base against Ohio State and, and Michigan, Michigan right. to be able to beat them right. and get there. Right. LS, th th there might only be about 20 programs mm -hmm. in America where you – can own an area to mm -hmm. the point that you can win a national championship. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's Michigan State. Right. I think the best you can do at Michigan State is catch lightning in a bottle mm -hmm. and go 11 and one one year yes. or 10 and two. And maybe you know what? Maybe you get the one player and you can do it one year mm -hmm. or compete one year. But but it's not going to be a consistent. Yes. So anyway, Nick Saban is pretty good there. And obviously we bring that up because one of the primary guys right. on the list, Mel Tucker, is right. Michigan State right now. Is he the next? Nick Saban, the finding the guy who is almost there mm -hmm. now at an institution that doesn't quite have what LSU has and projecting him yeah. as the next guy. So those are basically your two choices. Um, right. do, do you try to get the next Nick mm -hmm. Saban yeah. going with the LSU model from 1999 right. or try to get one of those right. established guys? I, certainly, I think they're going to try roll a dice and try to get one of the right. established guys. They were able to do it with Kim Mulkey. Mm -hmm. um, not they tried in baseball. Right. I love the guy they got. Right, right. But but they tried the established right. Florida, tried getting the guy that was mm. already there, couldn't. Yeah. So I, I don't know if you can. I think Jimbo Fisher's out. Right. And I think Ryan Day's out. Like some of these names I just throw out right mm. away. And I, I certainly think Lincoln mm. Riley's a long shot, mm -hmm. but Lincoln Riley might be the one guy of that list yeah. that you got a shot at. Do you right. agree with that? Yeah, I do. I do. I'm thinking, Lincoln Riley, the only thing I would be worried about is, again, does he have aspirations to be a pro coach? No, for sure. That, for that, sure. that would be the only for thing. For sure. And, and he, like Cliff Kingsbury, right. might actually be better suited right. for the NFL. Okay. That, that would be the one thing there. The other thing is, and you and I talked about this before we came on, you, you're looking at trying to maybe, again, get a coach before you get into the early signing period. How do you do that if you got a, you're got your team in position to win a national championship? If you are big-name hunting, like we hear Scott yeah. Woodward does, yeah. those big names yeah. are probably going to be in the right. final four right. or final six. Right. So, again, how do you do that? Yeah, if you're big-name hunting, you're almost punting next year. Mm -hmm. Bec or you're at... I take that back. You're not punting next year. Right. You're punting this recruiting class. Right, this class. recruiting class. Right. Do you have enough from the previous recruiting mm -hmm. classes? You can play the transfer right. portal. Well, Look, there's you, ways you to manage it right. that there didn't used to be. Yes. And you're still going to get some kids right. who, who come will come to LSU. Right. Look, you're they will lose. follow their coach. They're, correct. But you're right. also going to get some kids who just want to come to LSU. No doubt. Who, who, especially Louisiana kids. Especially Louisiana kids. Right. The kid in Lafayette, the quarterback, mm -hmm. he might Walk still, out. You still want to come just because right. it's LSU. A lot right. of kids in Louisiana right. are just going to want to play at LSU, yes. regardless of the coach. A lot of kids, look, we talked to, to uh, Aaron Anderson at Carr this mm -hmm. week, who was the first kid to decommit. And I'm telling you, this kid's going to be unbelievably good. And now it would seem to me he's gone to Alabama. Right. And I think he has a chance to be one of the a Jalen Waddle type yes. talent at Alabama. I think he's that good. But he went on and on and on about Ed Ogeron right. and was coming to LSU not because he's a Louisiana kid. He was coming to LSU because of Ed Ogeron. Mm -hmm. You're going to lose some of those oh, yeah. in this recruiting class. The bigger, the bigger the name you go for now, the harder this recruiting class is going to be. Right. But, again, there are ways to compensate mm -hmm. for that. No, I agree. Um, you mentioned, again, the ways around that. The transfer portal yeah. is one. Transfer portal changes The additional a lot. seven um, uh, signees that you get now yeah. because of the transfer portal. Right. So, again, look, they're going to lose players in the transfer portal, right. but they're going to get players back. Yeah, no question. That, a, a name will, will, will help that. And that, again, if you know, it will stabilize everything. It'll be interesting to see, again, how that plays out and how quickly Woodward is going to whittle this down. The other thing is we've seen it. We saw it with basketball. We've seen it, we've seen it with football. We've seen it with baseball in the past with LSU. 
LSU. Uh, again, I'm, you're talking about using uh, the, the LSU job as leverage to be able to, again, get, oh, get a contract. God, yeah. That'll be interesting to see, again, what's yeah. going on behind. I know yeah. he's going to be doing this quietly behind the scenes. Right. But, again, guys that, again, are going to use this job, they have no intentions of leaving, but at the same time, they're trying to leverage that for another job. Right. It happened, it happened again, with Les Miles. It happened with Ed Ogeron. Yeah. And when, they, when they got the job, it's happened with baseball. You just mentioned that. Will that happen again this time around? Yeah, and I will say this. Scott Woodward, two major hires. Kim Mulkey right. is, is elite. Right. I mean, that's per a stud. Per perfect storm. Though, per like, that is a 10 out of 10. Right, right. And the baseball hire, I think, looks like a really good hire. Like, Scott Woodward, I feel like right now he's hitting two for two. But he might have got the next Nick Saban of college baseball. He might have. And it... It, there sure right. are a, a, a lot, lot of people of, that think that. There, there are a lot of, like, the more you study what's already happened, right. it looks pretty good. So, I hate to say this, but, like, I, give him a shot. Mm -hmm. So, if, if he doesn't go big time and decides on a Mel Tucker mm -hmm. or that l second right. level, right. I don't know how you want to define right. it. Sure. But, right. Because uh, I don't want to criticize no, a guy like that who could be the next great right. coach. Right. Whatever way Scott Woodward goes, I think at this point he's earned a, all right, let's give that a shot. Based on everything he's Based done. Based on what he's in done. his career. Right. Right. I would agree. Shift gives to Tulane. Um, wait, one more question. How many, how many games do you think this team can win now? LSU? With, with, with everything, you know, uh, lame duck coach, yeah. everything else. Lame duck coach, but less pressure. A lot less pressure. A lot, and a lot more just playing I mean, free. I, I think they could win this weekend. I, I think they can, too. I, do, I don't know if they, I wouldn't bet on No, but I, I, think but they, I, I definitely uh, think they can. Right. I think this team can Doesn't win. they can run the football like they did last week? Well, no question. Um, I, think they, I think they can win seven and then a bowl game. Right. I can think they can win eight. Mm -hmm. And I, I definitely think they're going to get to right. six. Definitely. I would put money that they're going to get to six and mm -hmm. get a bowl game. Right. I think they could get to seven, and then I definitely think you're going to have a team playing in a bowl. And look, bowl games are so much more – yeah. Not even rosters or, no. or who's who. It's who wants to play. Right, sure. Who wants to be there. And I think you could have an LSU team mm -hmm. that really wants to mm -hmm. finish strong. Especially after last year. Especially after last right. year. And there's no doubt Ed Ogeron's going to be looking ahead. Right. You know what I mean? You're going to have a team 100% right. focused. I like this team to win seven and then win a bowl game. Some people believe that one of the reasons why this happened this past weekend yeah. is, again, in case this team caught fire, it might be very, very difficult they to win fire seven or eight Ogeron. and a bowl game. Right. So especially yeah. Louisiana guy. He's still got a lot of people right now. You, you look at social media, you hear the chatter out there. People, some people are upset that Ozeron got relieved of his duties. Yeah, no, I, I, I don't disagree. Yeah, let's go to Tulane. There's big things happening right now. Mm -hmm. okay, of course, Tulane 1-5, and five, take on 21-ranked uh, SMU tonight. That's going to be another really tough game. Yeah, really Cincinnati tough. next week. Yeah. It's a murderous row for them. Murders. And, then, and, then, and then Central Florida the following week. Yeah, it's, it's, oh, it, it's, it's, it's going to be really rough. The, we thought this might be his most talented team, Willie Fritz's most talented yeah. team. But again, look, they've had some injuries. Nick Anderson is a big loss on the big defensive loss, side of the right. ball. You know, Again, the offensively, again, they haven't been as, as efficient as maybe we thought they'd be. Yeah. But this, there is something on the horizon here that I think we both agree could be really good for Tulane. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll say this first of all. I still 100% believe in Willie Fritz. So I do he's I. the right guy at Tulane. And I think your expectations at Tulane, look, it's going to be, I mean, look at the last 70 years right. of college football. Your expectations at Tulane are to, are, are to hopefully catch lightning in a bottle, mm -hmm. but to be pretty good. This is a down year, no doubt. Right. But I think Willie Fritz has put enough yeah. three straight bowl teams. It, he put enough skins on the on the wall to survive this. Mm -hmm. I think they're going to be fine long term. This is a step backwards. Um, but, but the rearranging of the college football mm -hmm. conferences, I think we both think right. is ultimately going to be better for two. I don't think there's any doubt. First of all, last week it was about regionalization. Mm -hmm. Possibly again taking the CUSA, Sun Belt, and what's left of the American, regionalizing those, yeah. those teams again into something that was going to be more of a regional type conference. Again, teams jumping to different conferences. Michael Resto has not been about that. He's the commissioner of the American Athletic Conference. He wants to be able to, again, poach teams and to be able to try to get bigger TV markets mm -hmm. to allow this to be, again, uh, a, 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 a conference that still will get the attention of an ESPN sure. uh, and a TV deal. So now the, the, the newest uh, uh, situation that's out there right now would be uh, poaching Conference USA teams. Right. Charlotte, uh, Florida Athletic University, North Texas, Rice, University of Texas San Antonio, UAB. They're all six members of, of 
the uh, Conference USA that will put them in a 14-member conference in football, basketball, and baseball. And I'm looking at these teams, and along with the leftovers of the American, and I'm saying this is better for Tulane uh, in the future, winning championships in, in all of their sports because of, again, the teams that they're, that they're bringing in here. Well, first of all, look at those teams and look at where they are. Right. This is this this realignment. It's, it's all media. It's it's all right. about the TV right. markets. Right. It's all about the size right. of your market. Florida, Bur Houston, Birmingham is a top 50 right. TV market. Houston, uh, uh, the top 50. Right. TV Dallas, market. Fort Worth, San Antonio, San Antonio is the top 50 TV market. Right. This and actually when when. The American got poached. Same thing. It was all about TV markets. Right. Now, they didn't take Tulane. Right. Tulane was the one school right. in a top 50 TV market they didn't take. Because, look, Tulane hasn't competed at that top it's level. It, but, but look at the markets that got poached. The, the American made, I think it's a smart move from a TV standpoint. Right. you got to have the bigger markets. It's got to be about TV mm -hmm. because that's that's gonna where the money's going to come right. from, um, which is obviously generating a mm -hmm. lot of this. I think it's, look, Let's just be honest. This lineup gives Tulane a better chance to win football games. Year in, year out. Tulane was in a conference. Um, Tulane has been a mid-major mm -hmm. team. They're not... The American Conference was the one that was sort of halfway between Power right. Five and Group of Five. Right. Tulane belongs with the Group of Five schools and can win mm -hmm. in the Group of Five schools, can right. be more successful right. um, than they could be long-term in the American. Tulane was going to have a hard time year after year in the American. We saw the last few years, six and six was going to mm -hmm. be the max. You might maybe one right. year you go seven and five or even eight and four, but, but, but Tulane having a great year in that what was a, a really tough conference yeah. was going to be difficult. Now the conference is much more winnable for Tulane. You can you can win a lot more games, mm -hmm. and you didn't sacrifice the TV markets. No. Granted, Rice doesn't bring the cachet no. that Cincinnati does, right. although they do in baseball. They do, right. And, and they, they catch lightning in a bottle every and now and then. Right. It was Texas San Antonio does right. not, but San Antonio is a great TV mm -hmm. market, and that's a program that's taken On steps the rise, forward. Right. right. So, I think I think long term this is good for Tulane I, I do too. to be competitive and to not really lose a lot mm -hmm. on the TV side. Right. You lost some marquee right. value. Nothing you can do about that. You're right. gonna lose that. Yes. And, and, but I like this a lot better than the regionalization. I, I would not have wanted to see mm -hmm. Tulane get in a conference with UL, right. ULM, Lafayette, and Louisiana right, Tech, right, right, right. and Lafayette. Sure, yeah. You're talking about and, and Southern, Miss. Southern Miss. You're talking about significantly smaller right. TV yes. markets. That's gonna get you less attention. You're not going. On ESPN every week. You're not, you're not, you're not going to go on the ESPN plus. Right, unless you're willing to play on Thursday and Friday right, every right, week. You're not doing You're going to have a hard time. Right. This buys you a much better look. TV matters. It just yeah, does. It does. And 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 I think it's a good move for right. TV. Oh, I think I, look, I think honestly, Arresto did the right thing for the American. It, it, what he did the right the right thing would have been to keep it together. Right. right. But, but, but it was going to be but difficult. Once that didn't happen. Right. Yes. He he did the right thing in reaction right. to what had happened. Now Conference USA and Sunbelt will probably merge at this point, uh, building again another conference uh, again. But now for Tulane, this really really works for them uh, going forward. And look, uh, if you're a Tulane fan, I think you got to be excited. You got to look at this. You got to be excited right. about I think this so. in all sports you, in, uh, in every sport right. because you now have a chance each and every year if you're building the programs the right, right way right. to be in the mix for a championship. And you can't ask for more than that. No. You haven't had a, that at Tulane in a long, long time. You're not fighting it uphill. But look, you could beat Cincinnati, but you right. were going to have to be oh. lucky. Yes. And you're not gonna, in 10 years, you might beat them twice. Right. And whereas, I mean, Cincinnati, again, it, we talk about the players in the state I of mean, Ohio. Right. Like, Cincinnati is a program that is built to win right. at that second level. Um, Plus, and, and two academics, like, and again, the money that goes right. in the athletic department. Right. It, it, it's, it's two different stages right. when you talk about those type of programs. Now so, you can compete with all those schools. Every one of those schools, right. no doubt about it. All right, let's get into the Pels. Look, first of all, folks, <laughs> do we have to say it? One of 82. <laughs> okay. yeah. One of 82. Right. I can't tell you, my email box was full this morning. A, a, a messenger, everybody else, this is it. This team's garbage. Again, they're, they're going to be moving to Seattle. Yeah. Please, calm down. Yeah. Okay. It's one. It's one of 82, and you didn't have Zion on the floor last night. Yeah. Okay? Uh, look, I... I think this this is the deepest roster we've seen in a while. Right. I think there's a lot of potential on this roster. They were terrible last night. Mm -hmm. The bench was terrible. Oh, yeah. um, Trey Murphy looked, right. and I watched him in the corner mm -hmm. for a lot of the game, Looked played tentatively. Right. And right. That's all going to Like, like change. a rookie. He played like a rookie. Right. <laughs> That's well said. Right. Yes, he played like a rookie. I should have just said that. Um, this team's going to be better than right. that. Uh, Jonas Valanciunas is going to hit some it, shots. He's like, three this, for 19 last night. This team is going to be better. And I will say this, too. The Sixers, yeah. you see what they put together on the bench. There's a reason they were the number one oh, seed in the East. On, yes. Now, 
I, look, to me, there were two questions. One, how long is Zion at? Mm -hmm. they're, I think they're trying to underplay it as best they oh, can. Yeah, they're yeah. saying 10 games. I, I put the number at 22 at the number he's going to miss. Wow. And I think there's a better chance it's more than that than less than Ooh, that. Wow. Um, but that's, that's like, just that's me. Like, that's like a quarter of the season. I would love to be. Look, here's the fact. A broken bone in a foot. Right. You're talking about a 300-pound man yeah. who may actually be more than right. that. Might be 320 right, right. now. A 300-pound man with a 48-inch jump right. coming down on a broken foot. Right. Like, he's got to be right over right mm -hmm. before he can go out there and do that again or else you're risking re-injuring and being done for the year. Um, so without Zion, I mean, look, you're missing the one guy that makes it all work. Yes. The one guy that handles the ball in the paint, that opens up all the three-point right. shots. Plus, he's so ball dominant. Is he so, yeah, you, you're missing the one guy right. that makes it all right. go. Um, so, so one question, how long is he out? And the second question is, how many games can you win without him? Mm -hmm. If it's 20 games without him, and I said this last right. night on the newscast, I asked this to Ricardo, mm -hmm. can you win eight? without him. Is that the goal? Mm -hmm. To be 8 and 12. Right. Let's say he misses 20 when he comes back. I don't know if you can win 8. Right. Like you might be 6 and 14. Like what is a realistic goal? Well, it depends goal on the matchups him? first. Well, the matchups are rough right, right. for the first okay. 10. Yeah. And look, it's hard to look beyond 10 because you right. don't know no, you who's have no idea. what right. Right. at this point. But but it's rough right mm. off the bat and I, I look, I still I like what they're doing long term. <clears throat> uh short term this is going to be a rough 20 right. game stretch with that time. Right. See, 20 games, that's a, man, that's a quarter of the season. Did that's, you think it was going to be less than that? I was hoping it was going to be less than that. And I'm going to tell you right now. <laughs> I really was. Yes, I mean, I'm telling you right like, now. I, I, I mean, I was, hoping, be wrong. I was hoping like 10 games. You I know? would love yeah. to I'll be wrong. I'll be honest wrong. with you. Because I would it, love ooh, to be wrong. That's they rough. have always aired, oh, I mean, look, two years oh, ago. Oh, no, they went. Aired on the optimistic right. side with him. Um, I fear that's what they're doing now. Mm. And he's a large man with a broken foot who has this crazy vertical leap coming down on a broken foot. Did you buy into in, into the recent reports that number one, uh, well, number one over 300 pounds? I think we see that, but that again, the team was not informed of the injury and the surgery that was uh, reported by Bleach Report yesterday. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I mean, look, it's such a young team. I, I, maybe. I, I, mean, I, I mean, but if you're if with all the being so clandestine about Zion's injuries as they've been, they're okay? right. Okay. Uh, an injury like that, how does, again, how is the agent not calling immediately to say, we have an injury? Oh, we, yeah, we, we need, yeah, We need, we need yeah. to get your doctor. Even if you don't like the Pelicans doctors, they have to be informed. Yeah, correct. And, and it's yeah. got to be something in the contract that says got to be informed. Sure. As well as the CBA. Yeah. So, again, I, I, look, I'm interested to see how they have not even addressed that. Right. And nor do I think they will unless they have to. Right. Okay, but I'm interested to see, again, if, if that was the case. If that's the case, you know, that, that's much more deeper-rooted problems than, again, just Zion missing 20 games. Games. Yeah, no, and, and you're certainly right. Although, honestly, for me, I'm just watching the basketball. Uh, right. And you, you watch him last night, and without him, it just doesn't go right. right. Brandon Ingram tried taking right. over. He was, was by himself. He's, but, he, yeah, for a large part, right. portion, he's by himself. They, they still have defensive liabilities. Well, yeah, that's that, we, but that we hope that, again, that with time, that's going to change. We, we well, I saw effort last and, night. I did. And I, and saw, I saw energy. And some signs. And look, it just got away from it. Right. Philadelphia's hit right. threes. When they got in the third quarter, it was... It, yeah, it, it, and look, it went from 8 to 18 right. in a blink. Right. Um, I mean, it looked really good at halftime. Yeah, Furkan Kukmaz. Uh, 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 right. You know, uh, yeah, honestly, Korkmaz right. goes nuts. Right. Like, who, well, you, who sees that coming? Nobody sees it coming. But yeah. again, you got to, again, uh, look, they get, uh, uh, Antonio Daniels kept saying last night, know your personnel. Yeah. You know the guy can shoot. That's yeah. all he can do. Yeah. Yeah. You got to find That's going to come with time. Right. They got to be able to find guys that are confident shooters coming off the bench and guys even in the starting lineup. Look, they're going to have volume shooters with with Brandon Ingram and also Zion. Right. It looks as though Nikhil Alexander-Walker is going to be a volume shooter as yeah, well. Yeah. Uh, you, but, again, they're going to have to find some guys that are willing to shoot. I saw last night a lot of times guys looking to defer, yeah, trying, trying to yeah. get it to Brandon Ingram. Yeah, they don't know who they are. Well, they they got to figure Especially it out. Especially without, without Zion. With right. Zion, like I said, Zion answers sure. almost. I, I tell you the one thing that I did – like after the game was Willie Green came out yep. and okay I got on the Zoom it was all Zoom last year with yep. Stan Van Gundy and with Stan Van Gundy I almost didn't want to ask questions right. because every loss he looked so personally broken yes. and depressed and like like he like there was nothing everything I felt like I was going to ask him was mm -hmm. just going to put him further in a hole mm -hmm. like he took every loss so 
unbelievably hard. Right. And I don't think that's a recipe for an 82-game no, season. I don't. And I remember thinking that last year was this guy's got to – got I mean, look, that's the one great thing about baseball. Yeah. They play 162. Yeah. So a great team loses 60 times. Even in the NBA, right. a really good team is going to lose 30 times. Right. So when you lose, you have to be able to pick it up and move on. That's you got right. a game in two days. Right. And – the one thing I saw in Willie Green was after the game, he's he's asked all these sort of sky is falling right. questions, which I think a lot of Pelican fans are feeling. Right, sure. And he he, you know, he, he kind of laughed his way through and said, okay, it's one of 82. Mm -hmm. I saw a lot of positive signs to build on. We're going to get better. Like, I loved his demeanor afterwards is one that's built for the long mm -hmm. haul and I think built – more for fixing problems and yeah. turning things around than what I saw to Stan Van Gundy last year, mm. which was just just out and out right. horrible depression after mm -hmm. a loss, which is not a way right. to get ready for the next game two no, days later. It's not. But I will say this, and I even mentioned this to, John, uh, to Scott Kushner on, on Twitter last night. Uh, it, it's, it's his first loss as a coach. Uh, it's like a fine wine. you got to let it breathe a bit here. <laughs> okay? We'll see how it, we'll see what happens after 20 games if, if, if it's a rough oh, deal. Yeah, that's the question. What yeah. you, you, give me a number right now. 20 games. Let's say Zion Ooh, doesn't play for man, 20. Man, I tell you what. I, I'm, I'm hoping they, they between 8 and 10, they can win just to keep your head above water yeah. but again it, it's going to be difficult unless they have to be able to find some other guys that again can knock down some yeah. shots yeah if they can do well Valanciunas has to be right. like that and he and will I be think he will be Come yes on, he, he's shown he I, will well, be I, I saw a stat last night that Christian Clark put up uh, I think that that again he um, he was in the paint and uh, I think he missed from five feet away like 11 shots yeah, right crazy okay it was ridiculous he's not gonna miss 11. now he's also playing he was one for 13 within five feet now he's not gonna be that every night although every day. He, you don't play that basketball in a vacuum. He's right. also playing against Embiid, right. who, who right. is going to be as good a guy as There's he's going to play. There's no doubt about so that. So it's also, Embiid plays a role in right. it. So it, it's not it's not just that right. he was on, but it's both things. Right. Right. And, and he's and, not going to play the, Embiid and the pressure one more of the time. Contract, okay, he just signed a new contract. Right. Which again, some were questioning, myself included. Why not get him on the floor first? Yeah, man. That, that, okay, that, they did the same thing with Steve right, Adams. They did. And, it, and it was wrong. It was. Right. It was. And, and, and to make that mistake again, but again, a little bit different situation. He he wanted to yeah, extend the yeah. contract. Yeah, and, and, you don't, and it wasn't you don't tell a player that wants to extend a contract, no, that you really think you're going to keep And it was on the low end of the money Absolutely. side for what they could pay for what him. they could pay him. So, so I didn't think it was bad. Look, I, yeah, my goal is 20 games minimum, you win six. Right. And then maybe catch fire when Zion comes back, but hopefully seven or eight. Right. But I do think that's like an asterisk number. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I want to try to get opinions from people. Mm -hmm. How many can right. this team win? Well, if you, if you put a gun in my head, I'd say around eight. Based eight on, would be look. I think eight would right. eight and twelve would be right. great. Right. Um, okay. This is a deeper team. I think it's a better team. But is it a playoff team? Yeah. Well, I I think I, if you call it a playoff team, the tenth seed, I think right. they certainly could okay. be. Um, you got to see him with Zion and. And I, look, I think that's the question. I, I, I think agree. Without Zion, nobody, nobody knows. No, without, if Zion, let's just say Zion, the foot gets worse right. or he tries coming back and hurts it more. If Zion plays 30 games or mm. less or fewer this year, there's no chance they go to the playoffs. I'm with you. With Zion, I look, Zion is elite in a, in a different way. Yeah. And now he's at an age where we should see. The third year, you, you need We to, should see the new gear. Right. right. So. I wouldn't say no, one, but I, you, I need to see him on the court. And I have major questions about how many games he's going to miss. Yes, yeah, no, it'll be interesting to see how it goes. Doug, thanks so much. Certainly appreciate you being here. Yeah, my us. pleasure. There you go. Doug Mouton, Sports Director over at Channel 4. Thanks so much for tuning in. Remember, a lot of ways to watch this program now. First rebroadcast tonight at 6 p.m. on WLAE TV, 10 o'clock on the Deuce. Tomorrow night, 9 o'clock, Pelican Sports Television, 10 o'clock on LAE, 2 a.m. on the Deuce on wow. Saturday morning, and then Friday, and then Saturday afternoon at 5 p.m. Always at ericasher.com, always on our social media platforms, and always on the WLE TV YouTube page. Again, special thanks to uh, Doug Mouton for joining us. Also, don't forget to catch me on the radio weekday afternoons, 4 to 6 on 106.1 FM. Uh, listen live at ericasher.com. Also, iHeartRadio app, TuneIn Radio app, podcasts on all the major podcasting platforms out there. Our, our home base is the Anchor Podcast. Also, again, thanks to our underwriters who make this show possible. Really appreciate each and every one of them. Please support those underwriters. Also, thanks to the WLE Productions staff, including Ron Yeager, Jim Dodson, Will Ingram, Alex Jacone, and I got to tell you, best director in the business, William Hill. Thanks so much for tuning in. For Doug Mouton, I'm Eric Asher. Have a wonderful week. We'll see you right back here next week for another edition of Inside New Orleans Sports.